Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at this multi-level drawer in Flutter. Here you can see that as I click on an item it opens a sub-menu which further has a number of items and I can click on any of them. Along with this you can see that we have simple items like in a regular drawer on which you can click and perform a task which in this case is closing the drawer. The implementation of such kind of drawer takes a lot of complexity which is not quite possible to explain in a video and it might not be possible for everyone to implement directly. So instead I have created a package which you can directly use in your applications. So let's take a look at how to implement this multi-level drawer using the multi-level drawer package in Flutter. Okay so right now I'm in this simple app in which I just have this my home page which contains a scaffold which is covered by a safe area and in this scaffold I have this app bar which says a text that is this multi-level drawer and along with this as the body of scaffold I have this container which contains a decoration which adds this linear gradient to it and if I run the app on the emulator it shows something like this in which there is an app bar and a container with a gradient along with this in my application I have this assets folder in which I just have this simple image to show in the navigation drawer this image is also specified in the pubspec.yml file under the assets section now to implement the drawer the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the multi-level drawer package to our application I have added the link to this package in the description of this video so what we need to do is we need to go to this installing section and here we can copy the package name and then come back to the application and add this in the dependencies section once this is done we need to click on this package upgrade to add the package to our application and once the package is added we can close the pubspec.yml file what we can do now is we can use the drawer property of the scaffold and here we can add the multi-level drawer. And if the package is added correctly, you will be able to see the hints in the Android Studio. So we can click on this multi-level drawer and here you can see that it requires two properties which is header and children. So these basic properties of header and children refers to two main portions of this side drawer. In this demonstration, you can see that the top portion of the drawer is the header and the bottom portion in which we have all the clickable items is the children and each of this item in this children is an instance of this ML menu item so basically this children property will contain a list of ML menu items this ML menu item can either be a simple item or it can contain an instance of ML submenu and if the ML menu item contains an instance of this ML submenu then when the user clicks on this item this submenu will appear so let's take a look at this implementation in code so the first thing that I'll do now is add something to this header and this header property basically takes any widget so in this case I'll be adding a container which looks something like this so I'll just reformat the code and in this you can see that this container contains a height which is basically equal to size.height into 0.25 and this basically means that this is 25% of the height of the total screen and this size property is taken by this media query which I've declared in the build function Along with this, this container also contains a child which has a column and in this we have this simple image that we added to the assets and along with this we also have this simple text that says Retro Portal Studio. Once this header is complete, what we can do is we can come down to this children property and here the main task will begin. In this children, as explained to you in the demonstration, we need to pass a list of ML menu items. So what I'll do is I'll just add an instance of ML menu item and you can again see the hints in the Android Studio. And here you can see that it also requires two main properties, which is the content and on click. In the on click, I'll just pass an empty function. And in the content, we can pass any widget. So in this, I'll just pass a simple text which says my profile. At this point, if I close the app and run the app again, you can see that we have this simple drawer which has a single item that says my profile. At this point, this item looks quite simple. So what we can do is we can come back to the code and here in this ML menu item you can see that we have other properties also. We have this leading, trailing and sub menu items. And here you can see that the leading and trailing property takes a widget and the sub menu items takes a list of ML sub menu. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll add a leading property. And in this leading property I'll add a simple icon and this icon is going to be icons.person along with this leading property I'll also add a trailing property which is again optional but in this case I'll add an icon and the icon will be icons.arrowWrite once these properties are added I'll run the app again and go back to the emulator and here if I open the drawer again you can see that now with the content we also have a leading and a trailing icon 
At this point, if I click on this item, the drawer closes and there is no submenu. One thing to notice here is that this ML menu item by default closes the drawer whenever this on click function triggers. So to add a submenu to this ML menu item, we need to add another property that is submenu items. And this takes a list of ML submenu as explained in the demonstration. So in this case, I'll add the submenu items property and here I'll add a list. And in this list, we can pass an instance of ML submenu and here you can see that this ML submenu has a required property that is of the submenu content. And this basically takes a widget. And in this case, I can just simply pass in a text. And in this text, I'll just pass in option one. So just for demonstration, I'll just copy this item and create a duplicate. And here I'll change the option one to option two. And once these items are added, we also need to add another property to this multi-level drawer. And the property's name is submenu background color. And with the help of this property, we can add a background color to the submenu. So here I'll pass on the value of colors.white. At this point, if I run the app and go back to the emulator, and here if I open the drawer and click on the item, you can see that we have a submenu right here. And if I click on the item, nothing happens. And this is because we have not added the on click function to the ML submenu. So for this, what we have to do is we have to come down to the ML submenu and here we can add the on click property. And right now we can just pass in an empty function. And just like the ML menu item, the ML submenu also closes the drawer as soon as the item is clicked. Now, if I run the app and go back to the emulator and click on the drawer and click on any submenu item, the drawer closes. And also just for testing purposes, what we can do is we can come down to this on click and we can pass in a debug statement. Now, if I open up the run window and run the app again and go back to the emulator, if I click on the submenu item, you can see that we have the hello world debug statement right here. And you can see that the on click function works as expected. So I'll just remove the debug statement for now and I'll pass in the on click function to the other item also. And just for adding some content, what I'll do is I'll come at the end of this ML menu item and I'll add two more ML menu items to this children property. At this point, if I run the app and go back to the emulator, you can see that when I click on the drawer, we have these two items, which contains the submenu, and we have this third item, which is a simple item. And if we click on that item, the drawer closes. So at this point, we have the basic functionality of a multi-level drawer. And along with this, this multi-level drawer package also gives us with a number of other properties. Along with the submenu background color, we can also change the background color of the main drawer. For that, we can use the background color property and here we can pass in any color such as colors.gray. And if I run the app and go to the emulator, you can see that the color of the drawer is gray now. I'll just remove the background color property for now. And other than this, we also have this gradient property. And with the help of this property, we can pass in a gradient as the background of this drawer. So for this, what we can do is we can just come down here and copy this gradient and add this to the gradient property of multi-level drawer menu. Now you can see that we have the gradient as the background of this drawer. And when we click on the item, the color of the submenu is white because we have specified the color of submenu as colors.white. Along with this, we can also change the division color, which is basically the color of these lines that are in between the items. So in this case, if I pass in the division color of colors.white and save the app, you can see that the color of divisions now become white. Other than this division color property, we can also change the ripple color, which is basically the color of the ripple when the user clicks on the item. So in this case, if I pass in colors.green, at this point, if I save the app, and if I click on the item, you can see that the color of the ripple is now green. So by adding all these properties along with the header and children property, you can further customize the look and feel of this multi-level drawer. So I hope you find this video useful and you find it easy to implement this multi-level drawer in your applications. And if you do, please make sure to rate this package and also let me know what more features can you expect in this multi-level drawer and I'll try to implement them in the upcoming versions of this package. You can find the example code in the example section of this listing and also feel free to check out the GitHub repository for this project. So I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider supporting me on Patreon for more Flutter videos coming your way on Retroportal Studio. See you next time. Peace.